my good friend and our chief technology officer, Mr. Annie Smith, will be basically depicting the movie Inception via, <laughs> via containers. All right. Jeremy. Well. given this particular presentation for, so I have some notes. Um, good evening, or as a bunch of us who just came from San Francisco would say, good morning. Um, we, uh, we just got here. Welcome to the Starship Worker. Um, please keep your hands and feet inside the ride until, at all times. It may be a little bit bumpy. Today we'll be traveling into Worker, running code inside Worker, inside Worker. <laughs> but, ooh, we're going supposed to go this way. <laughs> and that's basically the entire reason for using Prezi. <laughs> uh, so my name's Andy Smith, I'll be your, your expedition leader today. I'm the CTO of Worker. Um, my background has taken me through pretty much all the levels of the stack. Um, started off in sort of web design, um, started working on a web browser, um, made a web application, uh, worked on platform as a service, then infrastructure as a service, then a hardware appliance, um, and that brings us all the way back to uh, uh, Worker, which is something kind of in the mix. It's a web application. Um, desktop client and platform as a service. Uh, so I think I'm uniquely qualified to take us on this journey. Um, I also like to go to costume parties. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, our destination for this trip is Worker. Um, it's a web application automation platform for building and deploying container specific multi tiered cloud native applications. Just kind of a mouthful, but I recently went to an enterprise conference and they like that kind of stuff. Um, we're a company that believes heavily in developer experience, um, basically improving the day-to-day -day lives of people who are creating applications and libraries by making it easier to automate your tasks uh, via pipelines, shared best practices through steps, um, and share the artifacts and containers your code produces with your team or users. Uh, and actually, why does it always do that? Okay. And actually... Uh, you can take the same journey from home. Since we made the switch to Docker-based uh, backend, uh, we've been able to provide our pipeline runner, the same thing that we use on the, the website, um, to you to download at home. Um, since we made, since we switched to Docker backend, uh, we don't have any other um, we don't have any other dependencies for you to run it at home. Um, so it's now a downloadable tool um, because we only rely on Docker, we, and we support custom workflows for interacting with multiple services um, and different containers at the same time. Uh, it's a useful tool for doing local development uh, as well as allowing you to run all the pieces of your multi-tier app while you're doing the development. So if you have your auth server, your API server, your web server, things like this, you can work on all of them at the same time. And we also have support for stuff like live reloading and uh, attached to shell on air, things like this. Since we're all inside Docker, it makes debugging uh, brief. Plus, we're open source now. So as of about a month, uh, we open source all of our code, um, or all of the, the entire job runner. Um, which is pretty cool. We already received some interesting communities, uh, community stuff. Uh, I think in the first week we got Windows support, which Woo, is cool. Windows! Yeah. <laughs> which I haven't tested yet, but I, uh, they have a little bit, so that's cool. But in addition to being able to contribute, also just being open source in general makes everything makes it a better tool. You can fix your own bugs. Uh, find you can find out what went wrong and why it went wrong on your own. Worker's cool. Um, you should all use it and recommend it to your friends. But this is a meetup, and meetups are about code, live demos, <laughs> cool hacks, and fancy batch prompts. Actually, I use a Z shell. So let's crack open a terminal. So once upon a time, uh, there was a bug. There was a user re reported a bug. Um, after steps, um, one of our features is we can run steps, whether the build succeeds or fails, after the build, to do things like notifications and stuff like this. Um, after steps weren't working after a certain kind of failure. Um, so we fixed the bug and we sent it out, um, and we, we released the fix. Um, but then some time went by, and eventually we ran into that bug again. Uh, we had made a mistake. We didn't have, we hadn't written a regression test. So we wrote, we decided to write some regression tests. Um, but it was a little bit difficult because the things we were trying to test with those things were not easy to unit test. So we effectively had to make a uh, a bash script. Um, that's sort of how test all test all was born. Um, it's a pretty basic, simple thing. Um, runs, has a couple different uh, types of tests to run, effectively just runs the worker client from the outside. Um, but there's an issue. Um, this thing uh, had to be run manually, like cavemen before worker came around. Um, we don't want to type any of our own stuff. We want, we want that stuff to get automated. So um, we're, we wanted to run this thing inside worker. So super simple testing pattern. So we went through and made this little thing. Um, it effectively just runs, runs Worker with a bunch of different projects. So for example, here is a uh, local services. 
Um, so this thing is, it's basically just a project with a worker.yaml inside of it. Um, this lets us, this one specifically is testing, uh, is testing that we can load a service from a, a, another local worker service. Um, so it's actually loading a service alongside of it. Um, runs, a, um, runs a node app within that, that's gonna listen for some stuff. Then our test um, using Alpine in this case. Um, although I used to be a Genji person, I thought it was quite fun. Um, uh, our test uh, basically just checks that the service has responded, um, and then that service, the service alongside is, um, is just a simple node box. Um, so basically that test is just testing that it can spin up another service at the same time, and then expose a port and connect to it afterwards. Um, but this is the kind of thing that's very difficult to do in a unit test. It involves multiple, multiple patterns, multiple uh, services. Um, so we wanted to run that all inside Worker, but Worker requires Docker access, and containers don't by default have Docker access. Um, so that means we needed to expose, uh, if anybody's familiar, um, on Linux, your Docker is actually talked to via this guy. So as long as we were, as long as we were able to expose the volume, um, this as a volume, to the container, it'd be able to talk to Docker as well. Um, but that, of course, meant we had to write a volumes plugin, or not plugin, a volumes uh, volume support for Worker, which we now have. So that lives behind the enable volumes flag. Um, and it's also configured by the volumes field in your Worker YAML. So first, we, def we, like, we define a common built machine. Um, uh, do I have this open already? Um, so we, we define a common build machine and then load some volumes. One is our local code path, um, our, basically our, our current working directory. The other one is the Docker socket. Um, we'll be installing our base packages um, and then uh, making our build. But then at the end of the script, um, we'll actually be, well, I guess it's this, this one. Um, we'll actually be running a worker, the, the build binary that we just built, we'll be running from inside this, inside this uh, build to start another build um, that has volumes enabled as well. And that second build is this one, which will run our test all script. Um, so it'll actually be, it'll start a pipeline within the pipeline, and then start six more pipelines within those pipelines. Um, and I'll get that running, so it takes a second here. So while well, it starts off, some anecdotal evidence. Uh, if you've ever used VirtualBox shared folders, they're slower than your internet connection. Um, it's more useful usually to download your dependencies. In this case, uh, for the sake of easy demoing, that's not what we're doing. Um, but it does mean the little slow part that you'll see at the beginning here is copying a couple hundred megs worth of files via VirtualBox. Um, this is updating the Docker image right now. Uh, normally you would bake those dependencies into the container itself. Um, but again, this, this makes for an easier demo. But again, VirtualBox. If this is on Linux, this would be free, a free operation right now. Cool, so it's installing our uh, our packages for building, building the worker client. All right, so this is it. It's starting to build. And now it's about to start the sub build. So you'll see another setting up, setting up environment step begin momentarily. This same technique can be used for pretty much anything you want to do as far as running Docker inside Docker. Um, you don't really want to do Docker in Docker, um, like the privileged mode, D&D, uh, &D, like, containers and things like this. Um, there's not a big point to it. Um, it's If you're going to be doing that, you may as well just load the socket into into the thing. Um, makes it quite a bit easier. Um, the only benefits of running Docker and Docker are that you can do relative mounts based on things inside the container, but um, it's significantly harder to set up and keep running. So now it's executing another the, the other Docker build. And now it's running the third level deep builds um, within that one. This one actually, even this test local services manages to get a fourth level in. Um, and in this way, we're able to we're able to check regression tests uh, in an automated way, um, even for something that is so, even for something as meta as testing this thing itself. Um, it now works very smoothly, um, and we can run this uh, automatically under commit. So after, after every commit, this full build is run? Um, this Docker in, Docker in, Docker build? Yeah, generally generally it's you're only going to be pushing up once you're ready to do like a pull request. Um, and then it'll run over the pull request. If you introduce a new regression test, um, it will fail. And then you 
you know, to fix something. Um, so yeah, these things are, 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 are steps that are yeah, complicated to test and previously have been tested manually um, and now can be automated away. All right. So yeah, that's, that's it there, demo. Um, I guess uh, questions are welcome for weird cases of Docker Docker. The, the gentleman before me mentioned that he runs his uh, Firefox inside Docker, um, which is using the similar, similar path, like method of mounting a bunch of like, private, um, private paths and things like this in your container um, to allow the computer to believe that it has access to the GUI and things like this. I have a question. So um, <coughs> uh, when I run, a, um, I run a worker build, it runs inside of Docker, right? Correct. So if I want to, uh, for instance, for my application, I want to build a new Docker container uh, on every uh, commit to a certain branch, mm -hmm. um, would I be able to run the Docker build command inside of a worker as well? Um, the, the, what we support for doing that is uh, you basically you build, your, you build your container inside Docker, inside, inside worker, and then you commit and push that container uh, when you're done. So wherever you're trying to put it, um, <coughs> we'll also just store it for you on the server. So you can just download the container again afterwards, but um, but yeah, rather than running, we don't run we don't run Docker files. Like your worker file is equivalent to the Docker file in that case, and so yeah, you at the end you you commit and push that container somewhere. Right. Oh. So a question that took some time for me to kind of absorb was why we had to mount the uh, local code pack. So mm -hmm. if you could explain that, that would be good. Um, yeah, the, the reason for that is on Mac, this thing is running inside a VM. So your user's directory is, is inside, has been mounted inside the VM that's running worker or running Docker. So the, the directory name when you're running worker, your code gets mounted to a directory called pipeline slash source. Um, but that's a sort of a relative directory to the container. It's not the same, it's not the same directory as the VM sees. And the VM only sees the users, it only sees your home directory basically. And so in, a, in, every, in every subsequent container, in order to be able to run another container based on the same set of code, um, the only way to share the code is to share a directory that is also visible on the host machine. Um, since you're basically just telling the host machine to start a new, to start a new Docker container, um, it needs to be able to see the same, same things. So uh, yeah, we have, to, we have to mount that as well as the Docker socket so that it can see the code. Well, thank you very much.